My name is Audra Lavoy. Today we are going through graduate school. Obviously, there's tons of different programs, but what we're talking about is that common pathway to figuring out the graduate school thing. What we're going to cover while we're together is things that are more reflective. What should I be asking myself to know? Is this the right time? Am I excited about this? We're going to talk about what a typical process is. Questions that I get asked a lot are around competition and potential funding. So we're going to touch upon those two. So what to ask myself, the big thing when I think about graduate school is there's so many reasons. So right now I've seen a lot of people curious about graduate school because they're going, I don't know what this external world is. I'm just either want to make sure I'm really competitive, I want to kind of slow down and, and procrastinate even, I'm not ready to enter the job market. Uh, other times it's logistics. This is the best time. I know that if I get it done now, I've already checked that box, I've already made that investment. So there's a lot of different reasons people think about it. Sometimes it is, I have been in this field, I have been in this job, what's that next step? I really need a higher level to access it. Um, other times related to salary timing, which we already talked about. Big thing is there's no right, there's no wrong answer. It's a matter of self-awareness and knowing what it means to you at the time to know how do I wanna approach my search. Things to ask myself is, is it the right time? So is it the right timing for me? Is it also the right career move? A lot of times the assumption is, well, the higher degree is going to help me out. And it absolutely can. And anytime we're investing in our own time and our own education and we're exploring, we're going deeper, that's going to help us in some way. When it comes to if your reason is that it's needed for the field, I say, make sure that's true first. Sometimes there's a certificate that can get you further along. Sometimes it's the difference between, am I looking at a master's or a PhD? So really taking the time, I always recommend looking at job descriptions. I think that's a great way to start. That's realistic and timely. This is what's going on right now, as well as informational interviews, talking to people in the field and saying, what's missing and how can I be as strong as possible? I have this little, um, site that I like. And once again, I'll, sh I'll share this with you. So you'll see the links. I just want to show you real quick. This is a general, general thing. So it doesn't incorporate everything, but a lot of times people are looking at graduate school saying, this is going to increase my, my, um, potential, my salary potential. And so this is a return on investment calculator and you put in your age, you put in how much you make today, how much you think you'll make. And once again, Look at job descriptions for something that's realistic, the amount of time in the program, how much this program is going to cost you, interest rates, and then when you want to see a return, and it breaks down and tells you, is this something that is really going to help you? I like this just as a reflection tool because, once again, a lot of people are curious. We make a certain assumption. Let's test it and let's break it down and make sure that uh, we're really seeing what we want to see in the end. The can I afford graduate school? Always a good question to ask yourself, thinking about yes, there, you know, if I'm taking out loans, there's debt. We're also going to talk about potential funding in a minute. So that might be one of those solutions. Then also thinking about am I stopping other stuff to focus on it? So that's always a big one, as well as the mental, emotional community? Can I take, can I continue focusing on it? Does it fit in my life? So the process part, deadlines, everybody's different. Usually, <clears throat> generally when we talk that it's almost kind of like a year long process. Like a lot of times people will spend the fall getting things together, working on their materials. They might be taking, taking any required tests at that time getting their, their letters of recommendation, those things. Then in the winter, they're actually applying to the programs that interest them. In the spring, they're finding out if they got accepted so that the following fall, they start the program. It really does vary. Some schools 
and some programs you'll find have rolling emissions. So they accept people in the spring or the summer or the winter or the fall. Others have uh, really strict guidelines, especially when you're going to a very specialized school. So when you're thinking about something like veterinarian school, that tends to be more strict if you're looking at medical because there's certain tests that are only offered at certain times that go along with those. So that timeline depends on what you're looking at. But once again, totally within your control and something you can look at today to know how much time do I need for when I want to apply or for when I want to be enrolled. And then what's the, the, what's the actual process piece? We're going to break this down. So personal statements, um, I do compare these to cover letters a lot. The big thing is to think about this as I need to be able to express why I'm interested in this program, how I'm a good fit, and how I'm going to day and work in the field. These are part of the things that the schools themselves are evaluated on. It's great. They want to see people who, who go through the program and graduate because that's why they do the work they do, but it's also how the school's evaluated. So they need to see people through graduation. Then the other part is they need to see people who are going and working in the field that they've been trained in, and that's another piece of how they're evaluated. It's also something that you should be thinking about when you're looking at a school. Where do the alumni go? And are those areas that are interested to do? I want to connect with them. Or is that another investment in where I see myself career-wise? Now, it gets kind of, can be very fuzzy. Sometimes these, these essays are, you know, tell us about yourself or tell us why you're good pro for the program. They're not giving you a whole lot. And they're saying, you know, uh, keep it brief or, you know, write, to, write as much as you need. And you're going, what does that mean? In general, if they are not specific, you're looking at that 500 to 700, about two pages double-spaced. The test scores all over the place. So uh, we have seen a, a trend, a pattern that some of the heavy sciences are not requiring these standardized tests. Some do. Other programs that, you know, most frequently you'll see the GRE. Some, if it's more math heavy, they're going to ask you for the GMAT. The, the LSATs and the MCATs are specific to law school and medical school. Big thing to look at is, is this required? If so, how, what do you need to feel prepared? Are you somebody who is strong, confident, happy, ready to go? Let me test it. Do you want to study? Do you need to take prep classes to do it. Um, one thing that is a tip is that we do say if you are a student and you're thinking about it, it's good to take these tests when you're a student. So most of them are good for a few years. You can check that out ahead of time, but when you're used to taking tests, you're a lot sharper at it. You're, you're in more practice. So if you're thinking and you're a student now, it might be something that you want to take when you're not super busy, but now is a good time. Um, the other thing is, you know, every one of them comes with a price tag. If that is prohibitive to you, ask and reach out to the companies and see if you can get a waiver for those fees. Letters of recommendation. Uh, just like everything else, you want somebody who can speak Clearly, they can talk about your work ethic. They can talk about how you work with others. They can talk about your dependability. Obviously, we want someone who is going to speak very kindly and somebody who is able to be specific, that your relationship was deep enough. When it comes to graduate school, if I am a recent graduate or a current student, that closest contact or that best person for me to reach out to is gonna be one of my professors, or it's gonna be somebody in my higher education community because it's most relevant for graduate school, but also it's the thing I'm closest to today. Now, if I am somebody who has been out of school for 10 to 20 years, I don't know those professors and it's been a whole long time, I really wanna find who's the somebody else professionally that can speak to the same things, those work ethics, the commitment to the field, um, my ability to be dependable and somebody who wants to always be learning. 
do recommend that you give people, you know, a few months, at least two months. Uh, remember, depending on the time of year. So if I am asking somebody who is a faculty member, if I'm asking them during midterms, it's going to be hard. So you know uh, generally what people may have on their plate, but if you're not sure, still, I recommend two months if you can for notice. Transcripts, this happens through your institutions. Big thing is looking and just seeing how long it's going to take. So uh, many will have that, that if they can email it in, you get it in less than a week. And that's a very quick process. Uh, it could take many weeks. Some have been, you know, we found in the summertime that we were backlogged. So a lot of institutions also were experiencing that same thing. Um, if it has to be a paper copy, once again, we're gonna add probably another three weeks on top of that. Also remember that there's usually a fee. So I actually just had to order transcripts myself. And one, I have two different institutions. One was, I think, a $2.50 charge and the other one was $7.50. So looking and seeing how many schools and how much is that gonna cost. The resume, like I said, I'm gonna send you an email with all these resources, including the resume one. The big thing when talking about resumes is um, a lot of times people are wondering, how is this different than if I was using a job resume? And the audience is a little different. So I, we're still looking and saying, can I show dependability? Can I show consistency? When it comes to applying to graduate school, I also really wanna think about those academics. So is it, do I wanna talk a little bit about my classes, especially if there was something with teamwork? Do I really wanna talk about clubs, associations, um, any of those group activities or things that I was involved in as a student? That's really helpful. In general, I always tell people, think about the volunteering that you've done, think about the paid work, unpaid work that you were doing if you had an internship. I want all of that reflected on it, but we just adapt according to who the audience is. So for higher education, focusing on that, you also know if you were somebody who is going into like the field of research, then I really wanna kind of dive into that. And if that means I'm going from a, a BS and looking at some of the MS programs, then I want to talk as an undergraduate, what, what research was I doing? What tools was I using? What techniques was I using? And any results, if you published anything, those are really important to share. Remember when it comes to your resume, if you are part of our URI community, you have access to somebody who's happy to review your resume. So if you are a current student, you have a career education specialist, if you are a graduate student, you're looking at going from a master's to a PhD, you have the director of professional development. And if you are an alum, you have our alumni career advisor, Karen Rubano. Application fees, just like undergraduate, they vary. So that's no big shock, but they can really go from that $50 to over 200, I'm saying under, but it can, it can be really high. Remember, this is another opportunity. If this is prohibitive, you can ask for a waiver. You may not get a yes, but at least you ask and you find out. The interview phase. It depends on the type of program you're applying to. But sometimes there are interviews. They may, by, may be by the phone, maybe video. You might have the chance to be in person. If you are looking in research or if you're looking at something that's connected with funding, you should expect an interview. If you are applying you know, to a MBA program, you may or may not. It depends on the size of the program. Big thing is just like any other interview, I wanna be able to show my interest. I wanna show that enthusiasm. I also want to show them that I understand what this program is and how I'm gonna utilize it in the future. Once again, I'm gonna finish a program and I'm gonna utilize this degree as well as I wanna be a contributing part of the community. And to me, I, I, I'll say it at the end, I'll repeat it, but I say it all the time, your time is super valuable. 
So if you are looking at a graduate program, remembering that I want to make the most out of it. I wanna make all those connections. I want to contribute in a way that's meaningful to you, that's supportive of that, that community you're in as a graduate student. And I wanna know that in the end, this really has moved me forward on whatever it is that's your goal. Like any inter interview, you wanna follow up afterwards. So write a note, thank them for their time. You can handwrite, handwriting always stands out. I do recommend following up quickly with any interview and sending an email because a lot of times that's the fastest way to reach somebody as well as um, right now, a lot of people are working remote. So it might have a, an extra delay if I'm doing now. Cost of applying, this is just in general, we're making certain assumptions of, well, I took the GRE and the GRE costs a certain amount, but I'm applying to extra schools and I need to also send in that. I am getting my transcripts. And like I said, this is $2 and 50 cents, but I personally just paid, you know, over $7. So they're little things, but they all do add up. And once again, you can request fee waivers if that is something that is not doable. Now, the competition piece. Once again, huge question people ask me. And it's, I'm really interested in this program, but I am falling short on the GPA requirement. Or that I, I really, I just know that it's a huge program and there's a whole lot of competition. I don't know where I stand on it. The good and frustrating answer when it comes to graduate school is there's a lot of gray. There's a lot of fuzziness of what's the rule? Well, it depends. It always depends. So each institution decides their priorities and they may or may not be transparent. And I'm going to say this again when we go to potential funding. You can ask though. This is, this is kind of the big difference. I think when you're applying as an undergraduate, you know, it's challenging for different reasons because it's the first time and, you know, it's, it's a new thing, but there's a lot more resources. There's a lot more of people doing it. When you look at graduate school, I think there's a little less communication and that's where it can be challenging. However, you have more agency because you have already had experience and you can take that step forward and reach out to those institutions and say, what is the most important? If I take the GRE and I don't like the test result, how much does that matter in my application? Should I plan on retaking this test? Or do I, does it really, is it not one of those heavy, heavily weighted? You're requiring it, but you don't really care. That GPA, is that a big deal breaker or not? If I'm somebody who's been out for, once again, that 10 years plus, does this stuff matter or is my experience going to really be a major consideration in accepting me? You can talk to the enrollment and recruitment and ask them how these things are looked at. A lot of times, probably the biggest one when it comes to competition is I have people say my GPA is low. They say that, they, that the average student has a 3.0 and I have a 2.5. Should I retake classes? And this is a great math question. So number one, ask that institution you're applying to to see if that really matters because they might look at GPA at fully, look at the whole, whole cumulative GPA or they might look at the GPA just within the program that you graduated from. So that could be a different way of being evaluated. They may care incredibly and this is just one of the, one of the areas that they use to vet through people. If so, and I look at those classes and I retake a low scoring class, a low GPA class, how much will that change my GPA? And I don't have an answer for you, but that's the question I would ask because I wanna make it sure if I'm investing that time and money that it's not something that then turns around and just moves me a little bit. It needs to have that significant, it needs to reach whatever your goal is of changing your GPA. Alternatively, some people will look and say, do I become a stronger candidate 
to not enroll, not be a matriculating student, but to start a program by just taking some of the classes. So I haven't been officially accepted, but there's classes I can take as a non-matriculating student and taking those classes. Can they, one, could they help me with my GPA? And or do they help tell the story of, I've already invested, I really want to do this. Now do I become more competitive because I'm going to have that closer connection to the program into whatever, whatever institution that is. Always ask more, have those informational interviews, see where the work experience and the volunteer experience get weighted and how they can help you be that strongest candidate. And by the way, I'm saying this, a lot of people don't reach out. So it's a way that you can get all these questions answered and save yourself a lot of time, as well as stand out in the process. How do I know what the cost will be? Graduate school sometimes is more costly, sometimes it's consistent. Usually where you see a big difference is that you don't have the same fees as you do as an undergraduate. So it can be le much less expensive. A lot of times too, I work with people who are very curious about an experience living overseas and that may or may not be doable due to different logistics and visas and gosh, it's complicated, but this might be a time that they look at something like graduate school in a different country. And graduate schools in other countries usually are very affordable. It also can be an opportunity to go and live and experience, potentially work, it just depends on what type of visa, but certainly gain that direct experience and exposure by living there. There should be some trend, there should be transparency on this as to how much they cost. Uh, but once again, you can ask and say, I see the tuition cost, what other fees are associated? Usually we're low on fees in this. But all that still may look, you still might look at it and go, gosh, even if it doesn't cost so much, it still costs thousands of dollars. So this is my last slide. And then once again, I'll, I'll stop the, the recording. I'll answer all your questions. But the final thing that I get asked a ton about is the potential funding. There are so many things I wish I had known. Um, and there, there really can be great, great opportunities to build experience as well as have things paid for. So number one, we're all super familiar with are loans. Um, just like with undergraduate, you can get the loans. Just like with your undergraduate degree, you can apply for FAFSA. Now with FAFSA for graduate school, you really should not expect any scholarships or grants. There's no real free money. What it opens up is it opens up the low interest rates for loans. So that's why people wanna look at them. Assistantships, I'm gonna like, whew, assistantships to me, these are an amazing opportunity to get experience while also having things taken care of. At URI, a full-time assistant, and this could be a research assistant, a graduate assistant, or a teaching assistant, but a full-time one works 20 hours a week and has their tuition covered. So there's still gonna be some sort of fees and everything, but they have 20 hours a week. Those are paid, not paid well, but they are paid. You're getting experience directly in your field and you're having your tuition paid for. That's an awesome opportunity. This is where it gets gray and fuzzy again, that you know a lot of schools aren't uh, upfront and telling you, here's, what they, here's where they are. And sometimes that's just, they want you to have the savviness to ask. Uh, sometimes it's that there's just not a whole lot of them. Sometimes it's that they are always in motion especially if you think about research assistantships, because a research assistantship is looking and saying, did we get this grant? And if we did, for what? So what is that person potentially conducting research? Which department does it fall under? So with assistantships, when you are applying, you wanna reach out and ask about them. Every school does them differently. Some will say upon application, tell us you're interested. Others, there's a couple programs that have assistantships as part of the program itself. And so they might do like a fair at the beginning of the year or even before it starts to help select people. 
Others are, it's really that timing. So this is where um, there might be kind of dumb luck that you applied and you're getting in in the, in the spring and one opens up. Most of them do open up in the fall. So sometimes that really can impact when you want to apply and submit, submit your materials. For the assistantships, there's two key places you want to ask. And that's going to be the same for these other, other areas. You want to talk to admissions and enrollment and ask them. So the group you're applying to, the graduate school itself, ask them about assistance and assistantships and scholarships. You also want to ask the degree granting college. So sometimes their, their communication is different. And the degree granting college might know about all those research assistantships because they've received the grant, but then the graduate school might know, well, there's funding and there's an assistantship, but it falls in a different department. So you wanna to talk to the, the college, the degree granting program, and you wanna to talk to the graduate school itself. Scholarships, same thing, talk to both areas. Fellowships, same thing, fellowships, um, Oftentimes where, where you can be helped is that someone's giving you a history lesson. So they're telling you, yes, we've had students and they've had a fellowship through this company or organization or government program. So the fellowships are usually an external thing, but I'm asking them to know what exists and what, what they've heard. There's also, we have, um, fellowships listed on the URI site, and these are fellowships for all different programs. So that's another great resource for people. And then you can use things like Idealist or Indeed to look for fellowships too. Education awards, some of these service programs like AmeriCorps and Peace Corps, they have a service award connected to it. So that is money that you have earned directly for education. Military, same thing, operates under um, different, different award system, but same thing, you're gonna get money towards your education. Specialized program, these are random things and it's hard, but that's where I talk to the graduate school. I also would talk to somebody who works in career because there's things that we've come across. Um, I had one a year or so ago that was specifically offering a free master's in education to somebody with a STEM undergraduate degree. I don't know if I would have even known where to look for that. It's really something of you keep the contact and you're talking to people. And then the last one is tuition reimbursement. Tuition reimbursement typically is gonna come through your employer. Often through your employer, they will say, we will provide a certain amount of money for tuition for education and we will use it, we will reimburse. So you either pay it outright or you know, submit the, the bills to us and we can do it. Usually has a limit, a specific limit, and it usually is related to the job. Some will be super open, but most of the time it is directly connected to the job. So this graduate program experience, lots of different pieces to it, but the big takeaway that I wanna make sure everyone has is that when you plan, there are so many more resources and it can be a much more interesting experience that doesn't feel so rushed, but also where you have potential to really find the right program and the right pathway through funding and connection to that staff and faculty. And we will end this part here. Thank you all very much.